Okay, we're going to get started. Please find a seat. Please find a seat. Check outside. Bring them in. If there's anybody out there. We ask the sisters to cover your heads. Brothers, uncover your heads. We're going to stand and face Jerusalem and open up. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. The power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever in Jesus' name we pray. Forever in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, that... Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you and to you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Today's scripture reading comes from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 6 through 10. May our Lord add a blessing to the hearing and reading and doing of his word. In Jesus Amen. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, now we're going to have a selection from the the kids choir and the adults. Happy Sabbath. Oh, my Jesus. 
Happy Sabbath. How many of y'all know that God will defend you? He will fight for you. He will lead the sheep to find his strength. You know. Tell me. 
say stay still well be still Happy Sabbath, fam. Happy Be 
Okay, let's get it. Both choirs, another round of applause for some long selections. And you know, like the kids' song, you know, you know, tomorrow might be too late, man. You know, and the Lord is doing some things that's shaking the world up. And those of us that have understanding, you know, we know it's gonna come to pass. But praise to the Most High God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Peace to everyone that's here today in the name of Jesus. Peace to everyone that's watching us on the internet. And it's always good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. And like we always do, we read out of the Bible, you know. And the title of the lesson is From Sorrow to Joy. Because, you know, things are going on in the world. We know that, you know, you can turn on your TV and see people are dying. And, and it's all coming from the Lord. And when, this, when the time is up, it's going to be up. Now, I don't personally know anybody that's de in the truth that, you know, died from this, but we know if it does happen, you know, then it was their time. Because the Lord said he'd go through the land and, you know, kill the righteous and the wicked. So we know we got some people that are dying all over the world. But it's to get our attention, you know, because um, we never, as we teach out of the Bible, we know the end result. It's only going to get worse before it gets better. And man is getting just a small taste of how bad it can really get. And you see how they react into this thing, you know. Mm. And as they slowly recover from it, they planting, you know, little seeds in your head to where, you know, things won't be, quote, unquote, back to normal like they say, you know. Small gatherings as opposed to big gatherings, you know. You got to stay six feet away from this. I was at the bank the other day, man. This, I couldn't get out. I got out my car and... You know, she walked backing up like I had to play. <laughs> so I backed up like she had to play too, you know? I mean, come on. But this is the mindset people have it, you know? And they tell you, you know, you may have it and show no symptoms, but then you can't get tested unless you have symptoms. What is that? So everybody running around passing it to everybody. I don't, I, I don't have no symptoms. I can't get tested. You ain't showing no symptoms. Well, how do you know I got it? How do I know if I got it? But they just doing that, you know, to get people all messed up. And they doing a good job of it, too, because most of the masses are going for it. And they got to the point to where, you know, they shut down sun worship, even though they tried to, whatever they tried to do to keep it going, do it at home, or I think this one false prophet, he was up in a, had the, it was like a drive-in out there. And then he was up from a hotel window preaching or something. I mean, it's just ridiculous. They still, in this time of affliction, they still trying to hold on to that paganism. But anyway, I'm, a, I'm done talking. We're going to get into this lesson, man. From sorrow to joy. Because we know there's an end result for this. And it's going to be joyous for those that are serving God. And it's going to be some, we're going to read some instances in the Bible where, you know, people have died. Relatives have died. But the end result from their sorrowfulness was joy in the end. And even when Israel, you know, the Lord put the sorrowness on us as a curse. To all the nations where we scattered at. But in the end result, it's going to be joy. But let's look at it. Job 5. We're going to pick it up in Job 5. Cause, and it's a good thing this is a short lesson. Because it was 30 minutes of music. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good music, though. Yes, it was. It was good music. <laughs> Maybe that's why the Lord put it on my mind to make this one short. I didn't know. But Job chapter 5, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Job 5 and 1, read it. Call now, if there be any that will answer thee, and to which of the saints wilt thou turn? For wrath killeth the foolish man, and envy slayeth the silly one. I have, 
I have seen the foolish taking root, but suddenly I cursed his habitation. His children are far from safety, and they are crushed in the gate. Neither is there any to deliver them. Whose harvest the hungry eateth up and taketh it even out of the thorns, and the robber swalloweth up their substance. Although affliction cometh not forth for the dust, neither doth trouble spring out of the ground. To affliction. It just don't come from nowhere. You got to read into the mic too, bro. So I'll scoot it over to you. So affliction. Although affliction cometh not from, from the dust, neither does trouble spring out of the ground. Go ahead. Yet man is born unto trouble. As the sparks fly upward. Yet man is born in the trouble is what? The sparks fly upward. So we born in the trouble. And it started in the beginning. That's when all these sorrows started. In the beginning when sin entered into the world. Let's go look at it. Genesis 3. Because everything was supposed to be nice and peaceful and no problems, no nothing. But once sin entered into the world, people started dying. And it's a sad, it's sorrowful when people die. But let's see what the Lord put in because of man's disobedience. Genesis 3. He passed sentence on Satan. Now he got to the woman. Let's see what she, he gave her. Genesis 3 and 16. Go ahead. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. So to the woman, what are you going to greatly Multiply your sorrow. Some women, you know, they real emotional. Well, women are emotional anyway. You know, but the Lord said he's going to greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. Go ahead. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. In sorrow, you're going to bring forth kids. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good thing after it's over, which we're going to read. But while you're going through it, man, it ain't nothing nice. I ain't never had no kids, but... Wife did. Man ain't supposed to have them, right? Right. So those of us that women that out there that have some kids, you know it ain't nothing nice. Go ahead. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it. All the days of thy life. So to Adam he said, look, because you listened to your wife and you ate of the tree which I told you not to, cursed is the ground for your sake and sorrow. You're going to eat of it all the days of your life. So it's a real shame when you can work and you don't have enough to pay the bills. Man, That's some sorrow stuff. But it all started in the beginning. What else is going to happen? Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field, and the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it thou was taken, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So cursed is the ground because of sin. You're gonna have to work all your life till you die. There ain't no retirement when it comes to the Lord. In man's world you can retire. I don't see how you're going to get used to not working when you've been working for 40 some years. You die of boredom. And then your kids get all that money. Ecclesiastes 2. So we see the sorrow that started away in the beginning. Because sin entered the world, along with sin comes sorrow because people are going to be dying. And it's a sad occasion. It's very sad when people die. It's an evil thing. The Lord called it evil. People are dying all over the world. Ecclesiastes 2. And pick it up at verse 22. So he said, and Cursed is the ground for your sake. Sorry, you're going to eat of it all the days of your life. Ecclesiastes 2 and 22. Read it. For what hath man of all his labor and of the vexation of his heart, wherein he hath labored under the sun? So what is man with all his labor and the vexation of his mind when he had labored under the sun? Go ahead. For all his days are sorrows. All his days are sorrows. And what else? And his travail grief. Yeah, his heart taketh not rest in the night. 
This is also vanity. So all his days of sorrow should travail his grief, and you can't get no rest. Your mind don't take no rest even when you sleep. It's steady going because of the sorrows that's happening around you. Go to Genesis 37. Let's look at what happened. Look at Israel. When they came back and told him that Joseph was dead, even though he wasn't. And it's a hard thing for a parent to lose a child because that's kind of out of order. The children's supposed to bury the parents, not the parents burying the kids. Because it's like, I think this lady said, when your child dies, it just takes a piece out of it, you know? That's the feeling they have, like something died within you. But let's look what happened to Jacob. Genesis 37. In verse 27, 29, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his children and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. So now Reuben went back to get Joseph out the pit and he was gone. He thought something bad had happened to him. He thought he got killed or something. He, all he knew was he was gone. They threw him in the pit, but now he ain't there. So they took his coat that his daddy made for him, put all kind of blood on it, ghost blood, and brought it to him. Let's see what happened. Go ahead. And he knew it and said... It is my son's coat. Yeah, he knew exactly whose coat it was. It was his son's coat. Go ahead. An evil beast has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. So now he thought an evil beast tore him up. Rent him in pieces. Go ahead. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth cloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. So he rent his clothes, put sackcloth on and mourned for his son many days. Go ahead. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I will go down into the grave until my son mourning. Thus his father wept for so him. So they all tried his, his daughters, his granddaughters, all his grandkids coming to him trying to comfort him, you know. But he said, look, I ain't, I don't, I ain't trying to hear it, y'all. I'm, I'm in mourning. I'm sorry. I'm going to go down to the grave mourning. That's how much he loved his son. And when he found out he was gone. He was sorrowful till he wanted to die to the grave. We see it was a good ending in the end of that. Go to chapter 42. 42 and pick it up at 29. Because he went down to Egypt to buy corn and all that. There was a famine in the land and Joseph put his brothers through the rigmarole, you know. And finally he couldn't contain himself. So he revealed himself to his brothers 42 and 29, what it say? And they came unto Jacob, their father, unto the land of Canaan, and told him all that befell unto them, saying, The man who is the lord of the land spake roughly to us, and took us for spies of the country. And we said unto him, We are true men, we are no spies. We be twelve brethren, sons of our father. One is not, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. And the man, the Lord of the country, said unto, his, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. Leave one of your brethren here with me, and take food for the famine of your households, and be gone. And bring your youngest brother unto me, then shall I know that ye are no spies, but that ye are true men, so will I deliver you, your brother, and ye shall traffic in the land. So Joseph told him, Go on back to your daddy. But I'm going to keep one of y'all here. So when you go to your daddy, I want to see the young boy. Bring him to me. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as they emptied their sacks, that behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when both they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob, their father, said unto them, Me have ye berate... Be me have ye bereaved of my children. Joseph is not, and Simeon is not, 
and ye will take Benjamin away. All these things are against me. So Simeon was left behind. He figured, you know, they was going to kill him. And he's still thinking Joseph is dead too. And now you say, you're going to take Benjamin? Go ahead. And Reuben spake unto his father, saying, Slay my two sons. If I bring him not to thee, deliver him into my hand, and I will bring him to thee again. And he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. So he said, Benjamin ain't going, because his brother's dead, and he's left alone. Go ahead. If mischief befall him by the way in the by the way in the which ye go, then shall ye bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. So if mischief, if something happened to him when you're gone, now he's going to be dead. Now I got three boys that's gone. Go right into 45, and we know what happened. 45, and pick it up at verse 1. What does it say? Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him, and he cried, because every man caused every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard. So he was crying real loud, man. This cat was hollering. Tears was flowing like the rivers, man. Go ahead. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. So he revealed himself and told him, look, I'm Joseph. I know y'all did me wrong, but God had his hand in it. I was sent here to preserve life. Verse 6. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he had made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. So the Lord had his hand in it, what was happening with Joseph. Skip down to 25 and read it. And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive and he is, and he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. Now his heart was faint. Because he didn't believe him. All this time he was thinking his son was dead. But they came back and told him he's alive and he's the governor of Egypt. 27, go ahead. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. And Israel said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. So we see from this sorrowful situation came from what? Some joy came from it. Because Jacob found out that Joseph was still alive. And he didn't lose none of his boys. Go to 1 Kings 17. This ain't going to be a long lesson. It could have been. But it ain't. And we didn't even mention what happened to Job. But 1 Kings 17. Pick it up at verse 1. 17 and 1. Kings first. 17. 1 Kings 17 and verse 1. Now this is Elijah. Go ahead. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook of Cherith, that is, before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he told Elijah it's going to be three years, no rain. No rain. So if it ain't no rain, crops don't grow, 
Crops don't grow, people don't eat, people don't eat, they start dying. Go ahead. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook of Cherith, that is, before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. So after a while, the brook dried up because it wasn't raining. Then what did the Lord tell him to do? Verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of the sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. So he told him to go to Zarephath, and there was a woman there, a widow woman. She going to hook you up, man. And he saw her and told her, go get me some water. I'm thirsty. And what she do? Verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And give me some bread too. Go ahead. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. So she said, I ain't got no cakes, man. All I got is this cornmeal and this oil. I'm about to gather these two sticks, dress it for me and my son, and after that, that's it. We gone. We gonna die. Go ahead. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after, make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. So he told her, the Lord, go on and hook me up, because the Lord said that barrel of meal ain't going to waste, neither the cruise of oil fail till the rain come back. And what does she do? 15. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat. Many days. So they was eating good. Many days. And what happened? And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass that after these things, that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. So they was doing all that good eating for many days. And what happened? All of a sudden, famine didn't get him. Son fell sick and he died. Mm. Go ahead. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? So she's trying to blame it on Elijah. Man, he was all right till you showed up. She forgot that they was eating good. Mm -hmm. But the sorrow when it set in, her son is gone. He dead. Go ahead. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid upon his own bed, or laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. So the Lord brought the child back to life. And what happened? And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house, and delivered him unto the mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. See, your son's alive. Go ahead. And the woman said to Elijah, now by this, I know that thou art a man of God, that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. So we know that by that action, she said, I know you're a man of God. And the word of the Lord in your mouth is what? The truth. Go to John 11. So that was a sad situation. Like I said, it's, just, it's hard when your children die. And people's children are dying all over the world. Go 
not only from this, but other things too. John 11. And Jesus and Lazarus is pretty tight. What would happen to him when Lazarus died? He even got to Jesus. John 11. And pick it up at verse 1. But we see out of every situation that's sorrowful, the end result is joy. Joy is coming from it. We got to keep that in mind as a servant of God. Joy is coming from a sorrowful situation. But just in case you don't know what sorrowful is, let's read it. What is sorrow, man? I got this little dictionary right here. Sorrow, deep distress, sadness, or regret, also resultant unhappy or unpleasant state. A cause of grief or sadness, a display of grief or sadness. So that's what it is, man, sadness. Anything that's happened that results in death, that's sadness. It's not a good thing when people die, you know. I don't even have to know you. You can turn on the TV and see it, man. It's a sad thing, man. Mm -hmm. Somebody just lost their life. John 11 and verse 1. What does it say? Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. So Lazarus got sick. He was the brother of Mary and Martha. So they sent word to Jesus and said, look, your homeboy Lazarus, man, he's sick, dude. We need some help. Go ahead. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. So Jesus said he ain't going to be sick unto death. So when they told him he was sick, he hung around two more days. Go ahead. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again. So he told them, let's go to Judea. And they was like, man, they tried to kill you up in there. Why are we going back? Verse 11, what it say? These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of, he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. So they told, Jesus told him, Lazarus is asleep, we got to go wake him up. And they were like, man, if he sleep, why we got to go wake him up? <laughs> but Jesus was talking about the cat is dead, so he had to tell him plainly, go ahead. Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead, man. Go ahead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go on to him. So he told him, I'm glad for your sake I wasn't there. But we're going to go. We're going to wake this dude up. Skip down to verse 19 and read it. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now their brother just died. And it's not a good occasion when somebody dies. So they go in and they comfort Mary and Martha. Go ahead. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been there or been here, my brother had not died. So now we got to blame somebody, right? First the widow woman blamed Elijah. Now Martha blaming Jesus. Man, if you would have been, he wouldn't be dead. But go ahead. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. But Martha told him, look, I know whatever you ask God, he's going to give it to you. And Jesus was like, okay, your brother, he's going to rise again. Go ahead. 
Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So Martha and I'm like, she was, I know he's going to rise again at the resurrection at the last day. Jesus was talking about, I'm going to do it right now. Mm. But we know she has some understanding that he was going to come up in the resurrection. But Jesus was talking about, I'm going to do this right now. Go ahead, 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So Jesus told her, I'm the resurrection. I'm the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, he going to still live. Go ahead. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth, believest thou this. And whosoever believeth in me and liveth, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Now, Martha, do you believe this? And what does she tell him? She saith unto him, yeah, Lord. Sure enough, Lord, I do. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not, was not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then, when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. So Mary blaming him too. Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. 33, go ahead. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in, his, in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have ye laid him? They say unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So now he crying over the situation. It's a sad thing, man. Lazarus is dead. Mary and Martha mourning, blaming Jesus. Go ahead. Then said the Jews, behold how we loved him. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Now all of them blaming him now. Look, dude, you love this cat, man. If you had been here, he wouldn't have been dead. Go ahead. Jesus, therefore again, groaning in himself, coming to the grave, it was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead. Say unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. So he was dead four days. So she said, you take away that stone, man. Foul odor going to come out of that. Go ahead. Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest, wouldest believe thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lift up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when, he, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with the napkin. Jesus said unto him, loose him and let him go. So he prayed to the father, and they brought him back from the dead. Now everybody happy, go ahead. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. So now we got some sorrow that was turned into joy from this. Go to Luke 19. This ain't the first time Jesus cried either. Because everybody happy when everybody's alive. But when you got some pestilence going through the world killing people, and then they give you numbers, too, to tell you how many people died. And then they finally start putting our numbers up, you know. Like the, at first, it was only killing old white people. <laughs> yeah, if you believe that. 
Israel getting hit hard. Why wouldn't they? The, the book says judgment begins where? At the house of the Lord. So anything and all the plagues that are not written in the book, we was going to get hit with. That's one of the curses. So whatever man invent to kill some people, we're going to get hit the hardest. Because that's what the books say. So now they're coming out with the numbers and the races. Yeah. Luke 19 and 41, what does it say? And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, so saying. He was at Jerusalem, and boom, he came to the city and he was crying. Why? If thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. Because he knew what was going to happen, man. He knew what was going to happen to Jerusalem, a city of the kings. It was going to be destroyed. Go ahead. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest, knewest not the time of thy visitation. And that happened in 70 AD when Rome destroyed Jerusalem. Set a trench around it so nobody could get in, nobody could get out. And they said he resorted to starvation tactics. And when after all was said and done, history book tells you Jerusalem was a city of the dead. Go to Matthew 26. So Jesus was crying over the city, man. Y'all don't know what's about to go down. And he told his disciples... He gave him a little, you know, preview of what's going to take place before he comes back. But the temple definitely got to be destroyed. And here's Jesus in the garden, man. He was time for him to die. But he ended up eating the Passover before that. I, I don't see how when you know you're about to die, you, you hungry. <laughs> You got to eat. But they did. You know, Jesus did it because he had to eat the Passover and be the Passover. But them cats that's on death row and your, net, your day is coming up and they give you your last meal. I don't see how you can eat, man. At least that would be my mindset. 26 and 36, read it. Then come of Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. So he took Peter, James, and John. He told them, Look, y'all wait here. I'm going out yonder to pray. And he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Go ahead. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. So he was praying to the father, look, man, I don't want to go through this. Is there any other way that we can get through this? In other words, he was like, surely there must be something you can do. Go ahead. <laughs> and he cometh. Unto the disciples and find findeth them asleep and say unto of Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he went back and they was knocked out. Probably all that good food they ate, because you know that itis set in. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh my father. If this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. So he prayed the same words three times. He did not want to go through this. Keep reading. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. 
Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. So he came back, they were still asleep. You can't keep waking them up like, whatever, man. Y'all go ahead and sleep. It's about, it's about to go down. Go ahead, 46. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand. That doth betray me. Okay, go to Hebrews 12. But we know the end result of what Jesus did. And we're going to show you what it was. He went through it so we could get eternal life. Hebrews 12. So sorrowfulness, joy came from this. And we're going to tell you what that joy was. Hebrews 12. And that's the joy we're looking for right here. Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Read it. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So we got to endure it to the end. We got to run this race with patience, even though we got all this stuff surrounding us. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which does easily beset us and run this race with patience. Go ahead. Looking unto Jesus. Looking to Jesus. Let's see what he did. Go ahead. The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. And what was that joy? Eternal life, man. The joy that was set before him. He did what? He endured the cross. Go ahead. Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So he had to endure just like we do. And if we endure, we're going to get the same reward. Go ahead. For consider him that endured much contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. So if you decide to throw in the towel or you think about it, remember, look to Jesus. He didn't throw the towel in. He went through it. And joy came at the end. Exodus 3. Joy came at the end. But you got to endure. No type of affliction is good. I don't care what it is. Death. Broke. Hungry. It ain't good. But you got to endure as a servant of God. People are going through it, man, and they reach it. Mm -hmm. They reaching for something. They trying to hold on to something. But it's that wrong Jesus. It's the wrong one they reaching for. Exodus 3 and verse 1. Let's look at the Lord when he looked at his people. 3 and 1, what does it say? Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see... God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am, or, or here am I. Here am I, yeah. <laughs> so Moses went up to the mountain to see why the bush wasn't burning up. Go ahead. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. So the Lord introduced himself to Moses. He said, I'm the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And what else? And the <laughs> Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. He said, I heard the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. I heard they cry, and I know their sorrows. Because you know it ain't nothing nice being a slave. It's sorrowful being a slave, and it's not a good condition. So what did he do? Verse 8. 
And I am come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perz Perizzites and the His Hivites and the Jebusites. So he told Moses, I'm coming down and I'm going to deliver my people and I'm going to send them to a land flowing with milk and honey. Verse 9. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel was come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest, mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So now I'm going to send you, Moses. I'm going to work through you to deliver my people. And he delivered his people. Because remember, the Lord said he heard their sorrows. Go to chapter 14. He heard them. Ain't nobody happy in slavery. Who like getting beat on? Who like getting shot? Who like being called out of their name? That ain't nothing nice, man. It's a sorrowful situation. But we know joy can come from that. And it's going to come by the Lord. Go ahead. 14 and 13. What does it say? And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians who ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. So your captives that afflicted you for 400 years, you ain't going to see them no more. It's going to be a wrap for them. Skip down to 26 and read it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Drowned them all. And this was just one nation. We're going to show you what the Lord is going to do to all nations that got Israel captive. Go ahead. And the waters <laughs> returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the shore. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. So the Lord saved Israel. Go to Esther chapter 8. Because remember, there was 400 years of sorrow. And once he saved them, Chapter 15 tell you they started singing. And there wasn't no we shall overcome either. <clears throat> Not that it's anything wrong with the song. Because it say we're going to overcome someday. Hmm. When the Lord come back. Amen. Only thing you need to overcome now is what? Temptation. Because the book say he did overcometh. He going to give him a white stone with his new name. Set him up as a pillar in the temple. But you got to overcome. Esther chapter 8. Because Haman was out to get him. He was out to get the Jews. Esther 8. Wait a minute. Let me get there. That's one of them books we hardly ever go to. Here it is, right here after Nehemiah. Esther 8 and 1, what does it say? On that day <laughs> did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jews, enemy unto Esther the queen. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai and Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman, and Esther spake yet again before the king and fell down at his feet and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman, 
the agitite and his device that he had devised against the Jews. So Haman was plotting against Israel. He wanted them all dead. But his plan backfired. Go ahead. Then the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king and said, If it please the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and the thing seem right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of, son of Hamada, the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews which are in the king's provinces. So the king held out a scepter toward Esther and told her, Arise. And she said, if it, please, if it please the king, all that stuff he was devising against us, turn it back on his own head. Go ahead. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the, the destruction of my kindred? Then the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther, the queen, and to Mordecai, the Jew, behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows because he laid his hand upon the Jews. So they hung this dude, man. Hung him. Go right in the... Uh Chapter 9, and pick it up at verse 1. Now in the twelfth month, that is, the month Adar, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution, in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary, that the Jews had rule over them that hated them. The Jews gathered themselves together in the cities throughout all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus to lay hand on such as sought their hurt, and no man could withstand them, for the fear of them fell upon all the people. And all the rulers of the provinces, and the lieutenants, and the deputies, and officers of the king helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. So Haman's plan backfired. Instead of the Jews getting killed, Israel went through all these towns killing everybody else that was going to get them. Because it's a sad thing, man, when you know somebody out to get you, and it ain't nothing you can do about it. But the Lord intervened, flipped the script. Go ahead. For Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame went out throughout all the provinces. For this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater. Thus the Jews smote all their enemies with a stroke of the sword, and slaughter and destruction, and did what they would unto those that hated them. And in Shushan, the palace of the Jews, the and in Shushan, the palace, the Jews slew and destroyed 500 men. And yeah, that's good. Seven, part <laughs> seven ain't supposed to be in there. Skip down to verse uh, 17 and read. On the 13th day of the month, Adar, and on the 14th day of the same, rested they and made it a day of feasting and gladness. But the Jews that were at Shushan assembled together on the 13th day thereof, and on the 14th thereof, and on the 15th day of the same, they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. So now they feasting. This is a joyous occasion now. Go ahead. Therefore the Jews of the villages that dwelt in the unwalled towns made, for, made the 14th day of the month, Adar, a day of gladness and feasting and a good day and of sending portions one to another. And Mordecai wrote these things. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all the provinces of king of the king Ahasuerus, both nigh and far, to establish this among them, that they should keep the 14th day of the month, Adar, and the 15th day of the same yearly. So now they're setting some kind of feast up, some yearly feast on this day and that day, so they could commemorate what would have happened to them. Go ahead. As the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies, and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy, and from mourning into a good day, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, and of sending portions one to another, and gifts to the poor. So as the days in the Jews when they rested from their enemies, 
and the month which was turned into them from sorrow to what? Joy. That they was going to be feasting. Go to Deuteronomy 28. So that's Israel, man. Something good can come from a bad situation. We saw what happened to him in Egypt. And that was just 400 years of slavery. We've been enslaved for thousands of years now. And still in slavery. Just because you ain't got no chains and a yoke of iron on your neck. That don't mean you free. Because what can they do with you, man? They so-called freed us. Hmm. Where you going to go? Twenty-eight and sixty-four. Let's see what the Lord said He was going to do to us for disobedience. Go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So you're going to scatter Israel among all people, and you're going to serve other gods, wood and stone. And what about these nations that you're going to be scattered in? 65. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, you ain't neither. You have no ease. It ain't going to be easy. How is it easy being in captivity? Go ahead. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. Trembling heart. And failing of eyes. Failing eyes. And sorrow of mind. And sorrow of mind. And all the nations we scattered in. That's what we up under. A sorrow of mine. Go to Zephaniah 3. So we got to endure all of this sorrowness until the Lord come back and deliver us like he did Israel. Didn't he tell Moses, I heard their afflictions and their sorrows and I'm coming to get them. And it was a joyous occasion when the Israelites saw all their captives dead on the water. So it's going to be a joyous occasion when the Lord come back and deliver his people. Zephaniah 3. And pick it up at verse 14. Zephaniah 3 and 14. Let me get there. Read it. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. The king of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over, th over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth. And gather her that was driven out, and I will give them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. So he said, at that time I'm going to bring you again, and I'm going to gather you, and I'm going to make your name. And a praise among all the people of the earth. And why is that? Because we <laughs> all over the earth. And we are reproach. And he said, I'm going to turn back your captivity. And people are going to know who Israel is. But we got to wait on that. And that's going to be a joyous occasion too. But right now we're in sorrow. Ecclesiastes 1. Ecclesiastes 1. But you can't be sorrowful all your life, man. 
There's joy at the end of the tunnel. But the way the world is looking at it now, man, they're, like, they're trying to get back to normal. What is normal? What is normal? When you can pack a football stadium again, that's normal? I remember we used to make fun of the Asians when they was walking around here with masks on. Now look at us. <laughs> oh, man. That's going to be the new normal, everybody with a mask. It's real talk. Then they run around saying they're going to take your temperature before you go into some place. Yeah, man, waking them up, shaking them and waking them. Hmm. But all we're here to do is what? Fear God and keep the commandments. They can shut sun worship down. It's like Daniel. What did Daniel do when they found out that writing was signed, that you can't petition nobody? He went right to the window, opened them up, and got on his knees and prayed. They shut down pagan worship, man. They just shut down Sabbath. So-called Jew fell for it too, but we know he's pagan. He don't believe in Jesus. That's why he went for it. Mm -hmm. And you know Papa went for it too, so everybody listened to Papa. Ecclesiastes 1. But we're here to serve the Lord. Like I said, when I see a gun outside the window and the military walking the street, then I know. What'd I say? Now read it, man. 17. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 17. Uh, and I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive, I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit, for in much wisdom is much grief. For in much wisdom is much grief. What else? And he that increases knowledge, increases sorrow. He that increases knowledge, increases sorrow, man. Because it's a sad thing, a sorrowful thing to know. That people are going to be dying wholesale. It's sad. And that's the knowledge we have. We done read the book. We know the end result. And before the end comes, a lot of people got to die. Lots of people. Let's go to um, chapter 9. Wait seven. a minute. 7. What am I looking at? Chapter 7. One verse. Verse 3. I think it was verse 3. Yes. Yeah. Let's see what this say. Increasing the knowledge, increasing the sorrow. <laughs> but what does this say? Go ahead. Sorrow is better than laughter. Sorrow is better than laughter. Go ahead. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. For by the sadness of the countenance, the mind is made better. So whatever affliction or sorrow situation you're in, it makes you better. Makes you better, but you got to go through it. You got to endure it. Mm -hmm. You got to endure it. Let me throw this one in there. It ain't in a lesson. I had it in there, but I took it out and I put it in there again. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15. Because sometimes this happens, you know, after the funeral, they have what? The repast. Ain't nobody sad up in there, is it? Everybody eating, reminiscing. But then what happens after everybody's gone? Proverbs 15. And you go to the closed doors and you're by yourself. 15 and verse 13. What does it say? A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. A merry heart. That ain't the one I wanted. But that one was good too. <laughs> Go to uh, Matthew 24. I'm going to find it. Because I had it in there. Matthew 24.
Matthew 24. And we're going to pick it up at verse. I don't want to get to Matthew until I find what I was looking for. Proverbs 14, that's what I wanted. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14, then we're going to go to Matthew. Proverbs 14 and verse 13. Proverbs 14 and verse 13. Read it. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. So even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful, and at the end of mirth, at the end of all that laughing is what? Heaviness, man. Mm -hmm. Sadness. And that's what happens, man, you know. Just like he's putting on the front. You know you hurting. But you know, you smiling like ain't nothing wrong, and and then you get by yourself and boom. The tears start flowing. Mm -hmm. You pick up that punch bowl and you drop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to Matthew 24. <laughs> Matthew 24. <laughs> Matthew 24 and 1. And we almost done. Uh. This wasn't a long lesson. 24 and 1. What does it say? And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So he told the disciples, he told the disciples that, look, this temple going to be destroyed. Like he told them in Luke when he was crying over the city. So they asked him, when these things going to be? What's the sign of your coming and the end of the world? What did he tell them? And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you, because they, you know, Messing the people up, man. People actually think this is the end of the world. Mm -hmm. They think a virus is the end of the world. And if it was that bad, people wouldn't be out there working. Mm -hmm. Essential work, they call it. People wouldn't be in the grocery store. I, I saw the, the gradual steps in this thing, man. You know, how they was going to make people... You can't get in if you ain't got a mask on. You know, when Trump said, I ain't wearing no mask. I'm, I'm with you, man. I ain't either. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. Keep reading. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So they're going to deceive people. Go ahead. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So all is the beginning of sorrows. Earthquakes, famines, pestilences. It's the beginning of the sorrows. Go ahead. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. I ain't did this yet. We keep telling people it's only going to get worse. How many times have we been telling people that? Years. Hmm. And more years. It ain't going to get no better. And now you're getting a small snippet of it. It's going to get worse. Go ahead. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. 
but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So we got to endure until the end. Go ahead. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And that's when the end is going to come, when this gospel get out. 15, go ahead. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. And when this guy show up, it's bad news, man. It's going to be worse than ever before. That's why he told you to run. Skip down to 21 and read it. For then shall be great tribulation, such as, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So then when this guy show up, it's going to be what? Great tribulation. They think this is bad. Look at what the books say. Read it again. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So they had what? Spanish flu back in 1918. They recovered from that. The plague, the pilgrims brought over here and wiped out all the natives. They recovered from that. Pig flu, they recovered from that. Swine flu, is that what it is? Pig, swine, it's all the same. It's all the same, right? Recovered from that. Got this thing. But the thing about the swine flu, it didn't hit as hard as this thing hit. It shut everything down. Shut it all down. People scared, man. But like I said, we're going to recover from that. But it ain't as worse than what tribulation is going to be. 22, go ahead. And except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved. And except those days be short. Everybody going to die. But the Lord said he going to shorten it. Verse 23. It ain't in the lesson, but read it. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And who are the elect? Then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. So who are the elect? Israel. Israel. Israel's the elect. That's why he going to save Israel and some of the other nations too. That's why they're going to be saved because of us. Revelation 3. Because if he said no flesh going to be saved, that means everybody going to die. Even his people. But if all his people get killed, then he didn't keep his promise to Abraham. But man and his, you know, finite wisdom he will try to destroy a whole bunch of people like he's doing now. Mm -hmm. We know where this stuff came from. We know the Lord got his hand in it. But they'll tell you what, somebody ate a monkey or an anteater or what? A <laughs> bat, a rat, whatever it is. It started over here and all of a sudden it's all over the world. Come on. Let's be for real now, right? It's getting who they want to get. Just like when they came out with this AIDS thing, right? They knew who they wanted to get rid of. But then it started popping up with people that wasn't sodomites. Now what? As a matter of fact, where's AIDS anyway? They don't even talk about it no more. Revelation 3, man. Verse 9, what does it say? Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie, behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee because thou hast kept the word of my patience. So we got to endure, right? Keep the word of his patience. And if we do that, what's going to happen? I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. I'm going to keep you from the hour of temptation, which is tribulation. And it's going to come up on what? All the world. Ain't this virus all over the world? Mm -hmm. What you think tribulation going to be? All over the world. And it's only going to get worse. Read some more, man. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. So whatever you're holding on to, you better hold it and keep it with you. Second Samuel 2.
2 Samuel 2. And pick it up at 2 Samuel 2. 2 Samuel 24. Yeah. 2 Samuel 24. And pick it up at verse 1. Twenty-four and one. What does it say? And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and He moved David against them to say, "Go number Israel and Judah." For the king said to Joab, the captain of the host which was with him, "Go now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people." So the Lord was mad at Israel. He told Joab, "Go and number them." And that was a no-no. And after David did it, his heart smote him. Verse 10, what does it say? And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. So the Lord told David, look, I messed up. Take away my sin because I did bad. I jacked up, Lord. So he sent Gad to tell him, look, you got three years of famine, three months of your enemies coming against you, but three days of the sword of the Lord. So David fell on the sure mercies of God. Skip down to 15. And what did the Lord do? So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba, 70,000 men. So the Lord sent the pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. So the, David chose three days and he got it. 72 hours of pestilence and 70,000 people died. 70,000 in three days. You'd have people that catch this stuff and dead the next day. And it's coming from the Lord. Skip down to 19 and read it. I'm sorry. 16. 16. What does it say? And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. It's enough. So what they try to do, flatten the curve. <laughs> when the Lord says it's time for the stop, it's going to stop. That curve going to be flat. It's going to flatten. When the Lord say it's enough. Read some more. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aranua the Jebusite. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. I did this, Lord. I did wickedly, but go ahead. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. But these sheep, the 70,000 people that got killed, what did they do, God? Give me the punishment. Go to Revelation 8. And we got three more places. Revelation 8. And we do this lesson, you know. Trumpets come up every year, and it represents the day the Lord is going to come back and take this world over, but he's going to do it in seven trumpets. Seven is the last one. He's coming back. But before the seventh trumpet blows, six got to blow before that. That's why this thing that's going on now, we know it's, you know, it's bad, but it's really not that bad. When it comes to what the Lord really going to do to the people all over the world. Revelation 8 and verse 6. Read it. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of trees was burnt up and all green grass was burnt up. So hell and fire mingled with blood were cast where? On the earth. And the third part of the trees was burnt up. 
All the green grass burn up. Go ahead. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the sea became blood. Go ahead. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. So a third part of the creatures that was in the sea had life. They was dead. What else? And the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. So salt water got messed up. Now we got to get the fresh water, the stuff that people drink. You ain't going to be able to filter out none of this right here to make it safe. Go ahead. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as a third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. So all the night and day is all out of whack. People going crazy, man. Not to mention they're going to mess y'all's phones up. <laughs> that should have been the first trumpet right there. Everybody's phone go dead. <laughs> right. And people running it. around crazy. Go to uh, 16 and verse 1. 16 and 1. What does it say? And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a, noise, a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his, his image. So those that took the mark, guess what? You got a plague on you. Whatever plague it is, some kind of virus, the Lord going to get you. For taking that mark. Go ahead. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. And it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters. And they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. So this is some righteous killing from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Luke 21 two more places Luke 21 but after all is said and done we know that even from all this tribulation some joy is going to come from that and what is that Jesus coming back taking over and a thousand years of no problems but he got to straighten things out first Luke 21, <clears throat> verse 25. Luke 21 and 25. What is say? And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them to fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Man's hearts failing them for fear. Nations with perplexity. Go ahead. And then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. And when these things come to pass, here come the joy. Look right on up and here come Jesus. For your redemption is drawn near. John 16. Israel. John 16. Pick it up at verse 15. John 16 and 15. John 16 and verse 15. Read it. 
All things that the Father have are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while and ye shall not see me, and again a little while and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while and ye shall not see me, and again a little while and ye shall see me, and because I go to the Father. So they didn't know what Jesus was talking about. It's like he was talking in circles to them. You're going to see me now and then you're going to see me a little bit. Later, because I go to the Father, you know, so they trying, what is he talking about, man? Go ahead. Then said, therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while. We cannot tell what he saith. Now, Jesus knew that they were deserious to ask him and said unto them, do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while and ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, have sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she delivereth, or as, but as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. So a woman, when she's travailing, she's in sorrow, ain't she? Yep. Those of y'all that had kids, it ain't nothing nice. But then after all is said and done, what you got? You got that little baby in your arms and, and all that good stuff is a joyous occasion. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Here third, o, have ye asked nothing in my name, ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. That's right. Go ahead. And at, Father, at that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. So he told him, look, I came from the Father, come into the world, now I'm going back. 29, what does it say? His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest, knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee by this we believe that thou camest forth from God. So now he spoke plainly to him, and now they believe him. Go ahead. Jesus is going to ask him again. Go ahead. Jesus answered him, do ye now believe? Do you now believe? Go ahead. Behold, the hour cometh, yeah, is now come, that ye shall be scattered. Every man to his own and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the father is with me. So the hour is going to come when y'all are going to book up. You're going to scatter like roaches. When they come and get me, the books say they ran, didn't they? But I'm not, I won't be alone. The father is going to be with me. Verse 33, go ahead. These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. That ye in me, Jesus has spoken these things, that in me... You might have peace. Go ahead. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. Things going to happen to you. But go ahead. But be of good cheer. But you're supposed to be happy. Why? I have overcome the world. Because Jesus gave us the example. Remember the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. So he could get eternal life. But in this world, we're going to have tribulation, all kind of afflictions, pestilences, viruses, whatever you want to call them. But we got to be a good cheer. Revelation 21, because we're trying to get to this point. Revelation 21. It's 
So it's sorrowful out there, but it's going to be turned into joy as a servant of God. We know this thing going to come to pass. They're going to come up with a new normal. <laughs> the Lord going to hit them again, bust that up. And they're going to come up with another new normal. The Lord going to bust that up. And then he's going to hit them with the big one, tribulation. And ain't no recovering from that. Because once you got the mark, it's a wrap. But he's just setting you up for it, giving you little tidbits of what he can do. And won't nobody acknowledge it. I heard that governor say, this ain't no act of God. Really? Mm. It ain't an act of God, huh? That's why your state probably getting hit hardest. Hmm. But you know, people say what they're going to say. You see, you see where their faith is. Revelation 21 and verse 1, what does it say? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So now here come New Jerusalem, that place where Jesus went to prepare, the house of many mansions. It's coming down, and God is going to be with, and, the, and God is with men. He's going to dwell with them. They shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And what else he's going to do? Go ahead. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There's going to be no more crying, no more tears, because tears are a waste of good suffering anyway. No more tears, if you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Read it. And there shall be no more death. No more dying. Neither sorrow. No more sorrow. Nor crying. No crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. Any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I make all things new. Go ahead. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true. And faithful. And I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. <laughs> we got some announcements here. Go ahead. We welcome you and hope today's lesson increased your knowledge of the Holy Bible. CDs and DVDs of the Sabbath lesson are available. Please place your order and donation in an offering envelope and it will be filled on the next Sabbath. The children's class, ages 3 to 5 and 6 to 12, starts at the same time as the adult Sabbath lesson in the assigned location. Bring your child so that their knowledge may be increased. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22 and 6. Adult question and answer is from 4.30 to 6.30 after the Sabbath lesson. Team form is every other Sabbath at 4.30. We have question and answer every Wednesday at 5 p.m. via telephone conference line. The number and access code are located at the top of today's lesson or see the live stream of question and answer at www.thykingdomcomenumber7.com. If you are interested in being baptized, please place your name on the list at the literature table. Remember to follow the dress code when attending our services. Men should remove all hats and all head coverings during service time. Shorts are not permissible. Women should wear a head covering such as a hat or scarf during the service. Women should not wear tight-fitting pants or skirts or revealing clothing. Attire should be modest according to the Bible. If your child becomes restless during the Bible lesson, we encourage you to remove your child from the room until he or she has settled. Your tithes and offerings are always appreciated. Please place your tithes and offerings in the offering envelope and deposit it in the offering box. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. Again, thank you for coming, and we hope to see you next Sabbath. Peace. Peace. Okay, um, just a couple of announcements. We, um, we finished up the 
seventh day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, everything went good. Uh, yeah. And just like, you know, as the feast end, all that good feasting, we're going to start picking up again with the monthly fast, which this month is going to be Wednesday, the 22nd of April at sundown. So that's the next monthly fast, those that are able to participate. It's always good to seek the Lord. And you can also fast for someone else as well. And the new calendars are in. We got them right here. We still got a few up in here, so I think I gave some of them out, and I'll get the rest of them out. And if there's any leftovers, y'all can have them. Um, we're going to start, in addition to the kids' class, I made an adjustment on the age. It's going to be from 6 to 12 years old. And then we have um, also a younger children's class from 3 to 5-year-olds. And we had about five, four sisters. Younger sisters wanted to volunteer and, you know, and help out with the younger kids so they don't have to, you know, sit up in here and look all over the place and be fidgety. So they're going to be, you know, doing some activities with them, you know, a little biblical, everything, you know, biblical stuff, coloring, things like that, you know, to keep their minds occupied. So that's going to start uh, next month, the first Sabbath next month. And, um, yeah, it's good because, you know, like I said, uh, harvest is right, but the labor is a few. So we got some more laborers in the vineyard that's going to help out with the kids. And um, Pentecost is the next feast that's coming up. It will be, it starts Saturday, May 30th at sundown, and it ends Sunday, May 31st at sundown. We're going to have service here, May 31st at 1 p.m., so keep in mind we're going to have back-to-back -back Sabbath days, so. And that'll be May 30th, so we got a little time for that. And um, let's see what happens. Also, the Homeless Outreach monthly menu schedule. Donations needed a bottled water, ground beef, penny pasta, 108 ounces can of tomato sauce. Deliver the items by April 18th, which is today. You got everything you need. Most of it, not yet. Okay. What you need? The big cans of tomato sauce. Yeah, it's hard to get though. They still they still buying up all the cans there. Uh, okay, well it might be. Okay, so cookies, you know, if you can find some old tomato sauce, that's cool. Because they're going out, the outreach date is next Sunday, April the 26th. So they're going to go out and, and do the homeless thing. And um, what else? Anything else? What time is it? We didn't go too much over time this time. Okay, um. Four o'clock. Four o'clock for the 300 men. And four um, o'clock for the women. Women's prayer. Okay, we're going to stand, face Jerusalem, close out, eat, and come back. The Q&A will be at 430. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give, us this day our daily bread, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, and lead us not into temptation but, deliver us from evil, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. forever. Praise the Lord. Praise for he, is good. for he is good. 
for his mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All praises. Great lesson. Thank you for allowing me to read, brother.